Well, good evening, folks. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 41. Tonight we're going to talk about Sagittarius the Archer, which is the final of the zodiacal constellations that we're going to go over in these tours. Sagittarius is located along the ecliptic, which is what makes it a zodiacal constellation. That simply means the sun passes through the constellation. Sagittarius is best viewed between July and September, making it a summertime constellation. And it's located in the south celestial hemisphere along the ecliptic. So let's put up our constellation lines. And you can see that on a summer night here, I've got Stellarium set up for August the 14th, 2020, at about 9.40 p.m. And if you just look south, you will see the asterism of the teapot outlined here. And that's what you want to look for to find Sagittarius. So let's put up the constellation boundaries, and you'll see that Sagittarius includes all of this area right here within this line. And I'll put the ecliptic up, which is that gold line there. And the sun and planets and the moon all move along this line. Now the sun leaves Ophiuchus and enters Sagittarius each year on December the 18th and then moves across Sagittarius and leaves the constellation on January the 19th each year and enters Capricornus, which is where we started these zodiacal constellation tours back at tour number 28. So we've gone through the entire zodiacal list of constellations. So um, the, the most well-known bright star in Sagittarius is right here at the handle of the teapot. And that star is known as Nunki, and it is a second magnitude star located about 227 light years from Earth. So there are tons of Messier objects located in Sagittarius. Now we're going to start with M8, the Lagoon Nebula. So let's go ahead and do a find. And through the finder scope here, about a six degree field of view, you'll be able to see a small cluster of stars and this nebulosity. Well, the nebulosity is the Lagoon Nebula. And through a wide angle eyepiece, you'll see it, it won't look pink or red as it does here, but it will be a, a black and white view. It's still really stunning. You'll be able to see this dust lane going through the middle of M8. M8 is a sixth magnitude nebula located about 4,000 light years from Earth. So let's return to a naked eye view and kind of review on how to find Sagittarius. You want to look south and you want to look for this teapot asterism. And off to the right of Sagittarius, you'll see the, the scorpion here, the, the J shape, the long J shape of Scorpius with Antares here as the heart of the scorpion. So if it's a little bit later in the year or later, later in the evening, um, much of Scorpius will have set. So you still want to look for the teapot asterism to find Sagittarius. But you'll see that Sagittarius is much larger and includes a lot more sky than just the teapot asterism. And, and the, uh, the night that I'm simulating here, August the 14th, 2020, 
we just happen to have two planets um, crossing through Sagittarius. We have Saturn and Jupiter. And as I said before, the zodiacal constellations will host the planets when they make their way across to each one. So there's a good chance that you will encounter a planet or two when observing zodiacal constellations. Okay, let's let's go to a dark site. Let's make it dark. And now it's a little harder to find the teapot asterism. It's right here. And the interesting thing is the Milky Way here, all this, this bright region here sort of looks like steam coming out of the spout of the teapot. So let's look for another deep sky object. We have M17 on the list. And M17 is also known as the Swan Nebula, and it shines at sixth magnitude. So it is just within the realm of naked eye visibility, and you can kind of see the little nebula right here. So let's look through the finder scope with about a six degree field of view. And at this, at this power, you can sort of see the swan shape. Here's the body here, and here's the neck, here's the head. It's upside down. And there's a simulated view of the Swan Nebula through a 24 millimeter eyepiece. M17 is located 5,500 light years from Earth. Okay, um, we have an open cluster also within Sagittarius, M18. I love open clusters. They're just so sparkly and pretty. M18 is seventh magnitude open cluster located 4,900 light years away. And there's a view of M18 through a wide angle eyepiece. It helps to put a little bit more power on uh, M18. Uh, here's the view through a, a wide angle 13 millimeter Nagler eyepiece. Okay, we'll get an idea of where we are here in the sky. Next on the list is M20, the Trifid Nebula. Sagittarius has so many Messier objects that you can almost conduct a mini Messier marathon just within the boundaries of Sagittarius. So there's M20, not quite Naked eye view, it's magnitude 6.3, located 5,200 light years away. And the Trifid Nebula is often shown in movies and pictures as this blue and red nebula. Now through your telescope, it's going to appear grayish color. And here's a simulated view through a 13 millimeter 82 degree apparent field of view eyepiece. Okay, um, I have an open cluster next, M21. M21 is right next to the Trifid Nebula. So through the finder scope, you'll see, you'll be able to see M21 and M20, the Trifid Nebula, and uh, maybe even M8 down here, the Lagoon Nebula, especially if you do like this with your binoculars or your finder scope. You can actually get all of these objects in the same field of view. It's really stunning.
M21 is a sixth magnitude open cluster located 4,200 light years from Earth. I love open clusters. I think I like them because they're accessible from uh, even a moderately light polluted location. Okay, um, I have a globular cluster next, which is one of the sky's best. It's M22. And you can see here, we're just next to the top of the, of the lid of the teapot. Uh, M22 is magnitude 5, and it's located about 10,000 light years from Earth. And this is one of the sky's best globular clusters. And you can see even through the finder scope that it's really bright and it's pretty big. So we're going to want to put a low power eyepiece on it. There's a 24 millimeter panoptic 68 degree apparent field of view, simulated view. This is one of the closest globular clusters to Earth. Uh, most globular clusters are five digit light years from Earth, and this one's just under 10,000 light years. So this is about as close as they get. Okay, and I have a series of open clusters here next M23, M24, and M25. I'm not sure if they're close together in the sky. They're close together on Charles Messier's list. So there's M23. And this is a magnitude 5.5 open cluster located 2,150 light years away. That's a nice one. That one you might even be able to get from a moderately light polluted location. So there's M23. Let's see how let's see how close to M24 we are. Right next door. Now M24. I need to get our Milky Way to show back up here. Let's see. There we go. Somehow I turned it off. Okay, M24. If you see this the bright Milky Way here. M24 is kind of this bright knot right here. It's very large. It's also known as the Sagittarius star cloud. And it's really best viewed through binoculars because it's just this, see this huge, the way Stellarium simulates it, it's not quite going to stand out that much, but it's going to be this real dense patch of starlight. And through the finder scope, through a wide angle eyepiece, it's just going to appear to be hundreds and hundreds of pinprick stars. And what, what it actually is, is a window through the Milky Way's dust lane. You're actually seeing more stars because it's sort of a gap in the dust lane. And here's a simulated view through a low power eyepiece. Um, this isn't a bad simulation. Um, it's a little fuzzy here in Stellarium and through your telescope, each one of those stars is going to be pinprick sharp and it's just gorgeous. So I highly recommend going out and viewing M24 with just about any instrument. I have no idea how I turned off the Milky Way earlier. I must have pushed something. Okay, M25 is next. And you can see here's M24 right here. M25 is just this open star cluster just to the left of it. Let's see through the finder. Um, M25 is uh, magnitude 4.6. So it's actually a pretty bright cluster. Um, it's also known as Malat 204. 
It's located 2,000 light years from Earth. And through a low power eyepiece, it is a stunning, bright, open cluster. If we turn off these star names, it will look a little bit more realistic. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Turn off the star names. You're not going to see star names in the real sky, so a little bit better of a simulation. Okay, Sagittarius is also home, as we already discussed, to a lot of globular clusters. And the next one's on Charles Messier list. There's quite a few here. So we'll start with M28. And we'll just go through these um, sort of the way we would do if we were at an actual star party. We'll just stop by each one and take a look through the eyepiece. Let's move up to our 19 millimeter panoptic. Magnitude 7.6, 18,000 light years from Earth. M54, magnitude 7.7, 7, 87,000 light years away. This one's pretty far out. Next is M55. Magnitude 7.4, 17,600 light years away. Next is M69. Magnitude 8.3. 30,000 light years away. M70. As I said, you can have a mini Messier marathon just within Sagittarius. M70 is ninth magnitude, 29,000 light years away. And then finally, the, the last Messier object within Sagittarius is M75. And M75 is ninth magnitude, um, located 67,500 light years away. And that one was right on the boundary of Capricorn. This is like right about there. Here, let's search for it again. Yeah, it's right, right on the boundary practically of the two constellations. So there weren't any uh, notable double stars to look at within Sagittarius. So this concludes my tour of Sagittarius. Good night and good seeing.